station, stop! You're crazy with the heat. Credit is no good for an ocean salesman. River City! River City next! Why not? What's the matter with credit? It's old fashioned. Hey, Charlie, you're an ambulance salesman, right? Your firm give credit? No, sir! Nor anybody else. Board! All aboard! Cash for the merchandise. Cash for the button hooks. Cash for the cut. Cash for the hard goods. Cash for the soft goods. Cash for the fancy goods. Cash for the nuggets and the pickets and the perches. Cash for the hot's head cast and demijohn. Cash for the crackers and the pickles and the fly. What do you get? We can talk. Well, you can talk, we can talk. You can bicker, you can talk. You can bicker, bicker, bicker. You can talk, you can talk, you can talk, 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 talk. Bicker, bicker, bicker. You can talk all you want. What a different thing you want. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. But you got it all the territory. Shh, 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 shh. Right, the Model T for the trouble with the people want to go, want to get, want to get, want to get up and go. Seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, twenty-two, twenty-three miles to the gun. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who's going to patronize a little bit? Why should he get rolled out on the town of the rail? 
Because in order to sell band instruments and instruction booklets and uniforms, he has to guarantee to teach them kids how to play. Well? And form them kids into a band with himself as the leader. What's wrong with that? He doesn't know one note from another. That's what's wrong with that. He can't tell a bass drum from a pipe organ. I'll catch up with that swindling two-bit thimble rigger. And when I do, I'll squeal on him so loud! <laughs> wow, you're mad, Charlie. She'll like to see you when you catch up with that fella. Well, not in Iowa. Even the great Professor Harold Hill wouldn't try to sell to them neck bowed hawk eyes out here. What? Gentlemen, you intrigue me. I think I'll have to give Iowa a try. Don't believe I caught your name. Don't believe I dropped it. Myself. Besides, how do I know you'd end up in a tank town like this? You were a pretty big slicker back when you were in the business with me. Too many close shaves the way you were. Besides, I got me a nice, comfortable girl now. Ethel Poffelmeyer, boss's niece. Gone legitimate, huh? I knew you'd come to no good. So, what's the new pitch? You're not back in the band business, are you? I heard you was in steam automobiles. Well, I was. What happened? Someone actually invented one. Now, give me the lowdown here, Mars. Uh, you'll never get anywhere in the music business with these stubborn Iowans. Besides, they got a stuck-up music teacher who will kick you out before you can even get your grip unpacked. Male or female? The music teacher. She's a librarian. Female. Perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. If you see her pass, pass by, point her out to me. All right. So, how are you going to start the new pitch? Same old way as usual. Keep that music teacher off balance and my next step will be to get your town out of the serious trouble it's in. 
River City isn't in any trouble. Well, then I'll have to create some. I have to create a desperate need for a boy's band. You remember. Now, what's new around here? What can I use? Nothing. Except the billiard parlors just put in a new pool table. They never had a pool table before? No, only billiards. <laughs> That'll do. Thanks, Mars. And remember, music teacher. Music teacher? <clears throat> ah, are you Mr. Dunlop? Yes. Well, either you are closing your eyes to a situation you do not wish to acknowledge, or you are not aware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Well, you got trouble, my friend. Right here I say trouble, right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player. Certainly mighty proud to say, I'm always mighty proud to say. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Helps to cultivate horse sense with a cool head and a keen eye. Did you ever take and try to give an ironclad leave to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? But just as I say, it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a ball line game. I say that any boo can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that sloth the first big step on the road to the depths of degradé. I say first, it's a little medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. And the next thing you know, your son is playing for money in a pinchback suit. And listen to this big out-of-town jazz beer. Hear him tell him about horse race gambling. Not a wholesome trot race, no, but a race where they sit down right on the horse. Like to see some stuck-up jockey boy sitting on Dan Patch. Make your blood boil? Well, I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in a table. Pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum with a capital B and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. And all week long your River City youth will be frittering away. I say your young men will be frittering. Frittering away their noontime, summertime, chore time too. Get the ball in the pocket, never mind getting dandelions pulled or the screen door patched and the bee steak pounded. Never mind pumping any water till your parents are caught with a cistern empty on a Saturday night, and that's trouble. Oh, you yes, got lots and lots of trouble. I'm thinking of the kids in the knicker park, short tailed young ones, peeking in the pool, hall window after school, you got trouble, folks, right here in River City. Trouble with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. Now I know all of you folks are the right kind of parents. I'm gonna be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversation goes on while they're loafing around that hall? They'll be trying out Bebo, trying out Cubeb, trying out tailor-maids like cigarette fiends, and brag all about how they're gonna cover up a telltale breath with sense and one fine night. They leave the pool hall, head and bird dance at the armory, libertine men, scarlet women, and ragtime. Shameless music that'll drag your son and your daughter with the arms of a jungle animal instinct masteria. Friends, the idle brain is the devil's playground trouble. Right here in River City. With a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. We surely got trouble. Right here in River City. Gotta figure out a way to keep the young ones moral after school. Mothers of River City, heed this warning before it's too late. Watch for the telltale signs of corruption. The minute your son leaves the house, does he rebuckle his knickerbockers below the knee? Is there a nicotine stain on his index finger? Is there a dime novel hidden in the corn crib? Is he starting to memorize jokes from Captain Billy's whiz bang? Are certain words creeping into his conversation? Words like, like swell. <laughs> and so's your old man. Well, if so, my friends, we got trouble. Right here in River City. With a capital T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. We surely got trouble. Right here in River City. Remember Maine, Plymouth Rock and the Golden Rule. Oh, we got trouble. We're in terrible, terrible trouble. That game with the 15 number balls is the devil's tool. Oh, yes, we got trouble, trouble, trouble. With a T. Gotta run with B. And that stands for boo. Drop your eyes. No. Didn't I meet you in? No. I'll only be in town a short while and. Good.
Keep on, Amaryllis. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Exercises. Yes, Mom. I don't remember the library being open last 4th of July. It was, Mama. All evening. Uh, Mama, a man with a suitcase has been following me all over town. Oh! Ooh. I never saw him before. Did he say anything? He tried. Did you say anything? Mama, of course not! Now don't dawdle, Amaryllis. So do la re ti me a little slower and please keep the fingers curved as nice and high as you possibly can. Don't get faster, dear. If you don't mind my saying so, it couldn't have hurt you to find out what the gentleman wanted. I know what the gentleman wanted. What, dear? You'll find it in Balzac. Excuse me for a living, but I've never read it. Neither has anyone else in this town. There you go again with that same old comment about the low mentality of River City people and taking it all too much to heart. Now, Mama, as long as the Madison Public Library was entrusted to me for the purpose of improving River City's cultural level, I can't help my concern that the ladies of River City keep ignoring all my counsel and advice. But, darling, when a woman's got a husband and you've got none, why should she take any advice from you? Another highfalutin' Greek. Mama, if you don't mind me saying so, you have a bad habit of changing every subject. No, I haven't changed the subject. I was talking about that strange odd stranger. With a suitcase who may be your very last chance. Mama, do you think that I'd allow a common fashion? Now, really, Mama, I have my standards where men are concerned, and I have no intention. I know all about your standards, but if you don't mind my saying so, there's not a man alive who could hope to measure up to that blend of cold bunny said cotton. No, Webster, you've been practicing for yourself. Your Irish imagination, your Iowa stubbornness, and your library full of books. <laughs> well, if that isn't the best I've ever heard. Thank you. Can I have a drink, please? May I have a? May I have a drink, please? Yes, dear. Wind trap. It's after dark. Is that a way to walk into the house? Hello. That won't do. I'll have a kiss from my boy. <laughs> that lady over there is your sister, young man. Hello, Linda. Linda, where are your manners? I'm having a party on Saturday. Will you please come? I would especially like it very much if you'd come. Winthrop? Well, Winthrop, Amaryllis asked you to her party. Are you going or aren't you? No. No what? No, thank you. You know the little girl's name. He won't say Amaryllis because of the S, because of his lisp. He's ashamed. We know all about his lisp, Amaryllis. Well, Winthrop? I'll no. bet he won't say it. No, thank you, Amaryllis. Amaryllis, Amaryllis! He's crying. Why does he get so mad at people? Just because he lisps? It's not only because he lisps, Amaryllis. That's just part of it, dear. What's the other part? Never mind, dear. It's just that he never talks very much. Not even to you and your mother? No, dear. We all have to be a little patient. I'm patient, even though he doesn't ever talk to me. But I do him. Every night I say goodnight to him on the evening star. You have to do it the very second you see it, too, or it doesn't count. Good night, my Winthrop. Good night. Sleep tight. Oh, there, darling, don't cry. You have lots of time. If not Winthrop, there'll be someone else. Never. I'll end up an old maid like you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Marion. Can I play my cross hand piece? May I play my? May I play my cross hand piece? You may. See, without a sweetheart, you have no one to say goodnight to on the evening star. I know, Amaryllis. For the time being, just say, goodnight, my someone. 
You can put the name in when the right someone comes along. All right. It's better than nothing. Yes, it is. Now you can play your crosshand piece. Now I may play my crosshand piece. Technique Shin for leading in the singing. And to J.C. Squires for his fine stereoptic and slides. And of course to Ethel Toffermeyer, our fine player, piano player, piano. As mayor of River City, I welcome you River Citizens to the 4th of July exercises set up for the indoors here in Madison Gymnasium. I count the weather. <coughs> Four score and... Sp <laughs> Four score and... Sp What's the problem? I'm in the middle of something. Uh, uh, yes, the, the members of the school board will now present a patriotic no, tableau. No, no, no. That's what it said. 
Ah, the, the members of the school board will not present a patriotic tableau. Some disagreements about the costumes, I suppose. Instead, the wonton Yi girls of the local Wigawam of Hiawatha will present a spectacle, my wife. <laughs> a, a, a spectacle in which my wife, Eulalia McKechnie Shin, will take a leading part. Please. spectacle last days of Pompeii will take place providing the rain stops by 9.30. It'll be up to Madison Picnic Park in the far meadow across the creek from the pest house. How can it be raining? Didn't the Gazette predict fair? Sure did, Ewart. That's why we're all prepared for a storm. The Gazette's accurate most of the time, and you know it, Jason. You wouldn't last very long in the banking business being yeah. a current most of the time. Yeah, now let's have oh, order just here. Just the order! Was order! order! I'm very late again tonight. I make her early. She's late, all right. Oh, no, I definitely checked it this time last week. Will you yes, members of the school board stop bickering in public? All the world I was trying to say. Never mind. Four score and pool table in town. Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, now, just a minute, please. Is it a pool table or isn't it? Will you allow me to get on with the exercises? What? Let's protect our children. Okay. Yes. Resist sin and corruption. Yes. Fight like that devil and keep our young boys pure. Yes. yes. Friends, may I have your attention, please? Attention, please. I can deal with this trouble, friends, with a wave of my hand, this very hand. Please observe me, if you will. I'm Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize a River City Boys Band. Oh, think, my friends, how could any pool table ever hope to compete with a gold trombone? Ra, 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 da, da, ra, ra. Remember, my friends, what a handful of trumpet players did to the famous fabled walls of Jericho? Oh, billiard parlor walls come a-tumbling down. Oh, a band, oh, do it, my friends. Oh, yes, I mean a boys' band. Do you hear me? A spiffy city's got to have a boys' band, and I mean she needs it today. Well, Professor Harold Hill's on hand, and River City's going to have her boys' band. As sure as the Lord made the little green apples, and that band's going to be in uniform. Johnny. Willie, Ted, Fred, and you'll see the glitter of crashing cymbals, and you'll hear the thunder of rolling drums, and the shimmer of trumpets, ta-da! And you'll feel something akin to the electric thrill I once enjoyed, when Gilmore, Pat Conway, the great creator, W.C. Handy, and John Philip Sousa all came to town on the very same historic day! <laughs> 76 trombones led the big parade With 110 cornets close at hand They were followed by rows and rows Of the finest virtuosos The cream of every famous band 76 trombones caught the morning sun With 110 cornets right behind There were more than a thousand reeds Springing up like weeds There were horns of every shape and kind there were copper bottom timpani and horse platoons Thundering, thundering all along the way Double belled euphoniums and big bassoons Each bassoon having his big fat say There were fifty mounted cannon in the battery 
Thundering, thundering, louder than before. Clarinets of every size and trumpeters who'd improvise a full octave higher than the sky. for emergency action. That man is a, a, a spellbinder. I haven't seen Iowa people get so excited since the night that, since the night that Frank Gotch and Strangler Lewis lay on the mat for three and a half hours without moving a muscle. I remember that one. Never mind, I want that man's credentials. I want him tonight, you understand me? All right, nothing less than that. Okay. You grabbed that hoodlum, he almost blew up Mrs. Shin. Thanks, Professor. I have to make an example out of him. Ringleader, you know. What he does, the gang does. Silly Clyde, let me go. You wild kid, yeah, hanging around my oldest girl. His father is one of them day laborers south of town. 
You wild kid tagging along after my oldest girl last Sunday? I wasn't either tagging. Don't you counterdict me! We was just walking, that was all. Tilly Clyde! You watch your phraseology. I know what you're just doing. My little Gracie has seen ya. Now you stay away from my oldest girl, or you'll hear from me to who laid the rails! Hill, I'll talk to you Monday morning about this band thing over at City Hall. Ten o'clock sharp! Men, I want that spellbinder's credentials! Constable, I'll be responsible for the boy. You don't know this kid. He's tough. He's got a gang waiting outside. Oh, I'll be careful. Tommy, I'd like to talk to you about the band. Aw, oh, gee, Professor, that's for little kids. I'm not talking about you being in the band. Look, you're mechanically minded, aren't you? Ever do anything with perpetual motion? Nearly had it a couple times. You did? You're my man. Do you realize nobody has ever made a marching music holder for a marching piccolo player? No place to hang the music. Silly Clyde. Wonder where I could get some wire from. Check your parent's cellar. That's usually where people keep wire. Oh, and Tommy. Yes, sir? Now, Constable, I'll show you how to break up the gang. Oh, young lady. Oh, miss. Young miss, what is your name? Sunita. I didn't have any idea he was beckoning me. You gods. Do you know Tommy Gilis? Well, I... Tommy? This is Zanita. Escort the young lady home. Only accept it. I'm not going home. I have to go to the library. You guys. Then escort the young lady home by way of the library? By way of the candy kitchen? Yes, sir. Do I have to? You have to. Oh, yes, sir. You guys! Professor, you're a bright young man. But you made a couple mistakes, though. Oh? The mayor happens to own that billiard parlor and that new pool table. Oh. What was my other mistake? That Zanita? That's the mayor's oldest girl. <laughs> Just a minute, Professor Hill. We'd like to have your credentials. We're the school board. Academic certificates. Nothing of the kind. We need letters and papers. Make him put up a bond. What am I hearing? You, sir. Say ice cream. Ice cream. But young man, I don't say if that's well, Talk answer. then. Down here. Ice cream. <laughs> talk slow. Ice cream. You see? Singing is only sustained talking. Now you, sir. Ice cream. Now you, sir, right here. Ice cream. Now you, sir. Ice cream. Ladies, from now on, you'll never see one of those men without the other three. Oh, Professor, you're wrong. Why, they've hated each other for 15 years. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. How? Can there be any singing sincere? Where is the good in good by shines up
suppose you live alone or anything. No. I have some wonderful caramels over at the hotel if you- Mr. Hill! Oh, Professor Hill! Professor of what? At what college did they give a degree for annoying women on the street like a Saturday Night Rowdy at a public dance hall? Oh, I wouldn't know about that. I'm a conservatory man myself. Gary, Indiana, gold medal class of Ought Five. Even should that happen to be true, does that give you the right to follow me around wherever I go? Another thing, Mr. Hill, I'm not as easily mesmerized or hoodwinked as some people in this town, and I think it only fair to warn you that I have a shelf full of reference books in there which may very well give me some interesting information about you. Hey, Gregory. Oh, hi, Mars, and don't call me Graham. So, how'd it go with the music teacher? <laughs> Scrumptious. Ate out of my hand the minute I tipped my hat. She did. Boy, did you kind of swath tonight. For a minute, even I thought you knew something about leading a band. It was just like when you used to impersonate that band concert fellow back in Joplin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Kid stuff. I'm in rare form these days. You just keep your eye on me for the next four weeks. Four weeks? But... It used to only take ten days for the instruments to arrive. Well, it still does, but it takes four weeks for the uniforms. Oh, no. Greg, you haven't added uniforms? Uniforms and instruction books. Instruction books? But you can't pass yourself off as a music professor, not for any four weeks. Now, Mark. Greg, you don't know any one note from another. I have this revolutionary new method called the Think System, where you don't bother with notes. But, Greg, in four weeks, the people are going to want to hear music. You'll have to lead a band. But when the uniforms come, they forget everything else. At least long enough for me to collect and leave. Oh, this is a refined operation, son, and I've got a time with the last wave of the brakeman's hand on the last train out of town. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Washburn. Gonna line yourself up a little canoodling, huh? Well, I... I could set you up with Ethel's sister. Nice girl. Teaches Sunday school. Uh, no wide-eyed, eager, wholesome Sunday school teacher for me. That kind of gal spins webs no spider ever... Listen, boy. A gal who trades on all that purity merely wants to trade my independence for her security. The only affirmative she will file refers to marching down the aisle. No golden, glorious, gleaming, pristine goddess. No, sir, for no Diana do I play fawn. I can tell you that right now. I snarl and I hiss. How could ignorance be compared to bliss? And I spark and I fizz for the lady who knows what time it is. And I cheer and I rave for the virtue I'm too late to say. The sadder but wiser girl for me. No bright eyed, blushing, breathless baby doll, baby. No, sir, that kind of child ties knots no sailor ever knew. I prefer to take a chance on a more adult romance. No, do a young miss who keeps resisting all the time she keeps insisting. No wide-eyed, wholesome, innocent female? No, sir. Why, she's the fisherman, I'm the fish you see. Plop. I flinch and I shy when the last with a delicate air goes by. I smile and I grin when the gal with a touch of sin walks in. And I hope and I pray for Hester to win just one more A. The sadder but wiser girl's the girl for me. The sadder but wiser girl for me. I'm sure. And naturally, I'm reticent. Oh, yes, I'm reticent. Oh, of course, Mrs. Shin, I understand. But you see, part of my plans include a committee on the dance and... No. Wait. Do that again, Mrs. Shin. The way you raised your foot just now. Oh, well, I have a bung in there that bothers me. <laughs> oh, what grace, what natural flow of rhythm, what expression of line and movement. <laughs> you must accept the chairmanship for the ladies' classic of the auxiliary dance. Mustn't she, ladies? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Every move you make, Mrs. Shin, bespeaks Delsart. 
Will you, will you, say yes, Mrs. Shin? You made me mechanically shin. Well, that is, dancing well. Then you accept? Yes, indeed. And I would like to... Uh, thank you. Now, the lady who plays the piano. Marion Peru, I believe. Well, after all, she is the librarian. Pickle little chuckle, pickle little chuckle, chee chee chee, chuckle up, pickle little more, pickle little chuckle, pickle little chuckle, chee chee chee, chuckle up, pickle little more, pickle little chuckle, pickle little chuckle, chee 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 chee. Her cousin, her cousin, woman, doesn't belong in any family. Of course, I shouldn't tell you this, but she's dirty, 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 chaucer, Broadway, more balls, Zach. And the worst thing, of course, I shouldn't tell you, but I'll tell Amanda my free lunch. Stop! I'll tell. She made brazen overtures to a man who never had a friend in this town till she came here. Old Miser Madison. Miser Madison? Madison Gymnasium? Madison Picnic Park? Madison Hospital? That? Miser Madison? Exactly. Who'd he think he was anyway? Well, I should say, the show-off. He gave the town the library, too, didn't he? That's just it. When he died, he left the library building to the city. But he left all the books to her. She was seen going and coming from his place. Oh, yes, oh, yes, that woman made brave jokes with the chicken 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 ch
Or what can I say, my dear, to make it clear? I need you badly, badly, Madam Librarian. Marion, if I stumbled and I busted my whatchamacallit, I could lie on your floor unnoticed till my body had turned to Cal-rian. Madam Librarian. Now in the moonlight, a man could sing it. In the moonlight And the fellow would know that his darling Had heard every word of his song With the moonlight Helping along But when I try in here to tell you, dear, I love you badly, madly, Madam Librarian. Marion, it's a long lost cause. I can never win. For the civilized world accepts as unforgivable sin. Any talking out loud with any librarian, such as Marion, Madam Librarian. I need you badly, badly, Madam Librarian. Marion, it's a long lost cause. I can never win. For the civilized world accepts as unforgivable sin. And he talking out loud with any librarian, such as man. Ladies' Dance Committee meets Tuesday nights. Brian, Marshmallow, Madam Librarian. Brian. Well, Tommy, we've had a pretty good morning. Eleven sales out of twelve tries. Tell you what, it's almost noon. You better go home and get some supper. Thank you, Professor. Thanks, Tommy.
their spellbinder's credentials, I say. Just a minute. Are you soliciting? You haven't gotten a license. Why, what? No, Mayor Shin. I, I, I collect doorbells. This one has an unusual ringtone. The flattery will not avail you. Soliciting is statutory in this county. Malfeasance without a permit. Why haven't you been down to City Hall with your references? Just missed you. I, I Mr. Mayor. What? Your hand. What? Oh, no. The spread of your little finger. It's hereditary. Well, what does that mean? It means that your son's little finger is perfectly situated to operate the spit valve on a B-flat flugelhorn. Well, is that good? 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 It means that America has finally produced an artist who is capable of flugeling the minute waltz in 50 seconds. <sighs> well, where can I get one of these horns? Sign here, Mr. Mayor, sign here. Fine, fine, that'll be $17 import fee. <laughs> yes, sir. Just to think that I could have missed out on this all. I don't have a son. <laughs> oh, you unscrupulous blue by night, you un... You get down to City Hall with your by God papers by three o'clock. You mean this afternoon? I couldn't make myself any plainer if I see a Quaker on his day off. <laughs> Mrs. Peru, do you realize you have the facial characteristics of a cornet virtuoso? I don't think I understand you entirely, Professor. If your boy has that same firm chin and those splendid cheek muscles, by George. Not that he ever really could be great, you understand. Oh, is that so? And in the name of St. Bridget, why not? Well, you see, all the really great cornet players were Irish. O'Clark, O'Mendez, O'Klein. But Professor, we are Irish! No. No. That cinches it, that cinches it. Sign here, Mrs. Peru. Your boy was born to play the cornet. Fine, fine. That'll be seven dollars earnest money. Nothing more due until the first installment, payable at the opening of band practice. Ah, thank you. And of course, I'll need the boy's measurements for his uniform. His uniform?! Hello, son. Certainly his uniform. And there won't be a penny due until delivery, which gives him four weeks to enjoy. To anticipate, to imagine, at no cost whatsoever. Never allowed the demands of tomorrow interfere with the pleasures and excitements of today. Would I have a, a stripe? A stripe? Certainly, my boy, a wide red stripe on each side. What do you think of that? You'll have to excuse Winthrop, Professor. We can't get him to say three words a day, even to us. And if you can get him to play in the band, you'll have St. Michael's own way with you. But if anybody could do it, I'll bet you can. Out of a crowd, I pick it for a hard carrying, clay pipe smoking, shamrock wearing, maverine pinching, Tarvis Hall, minstrel singing Irishman. Be gob and be jock is where you from me by. Gary, Indiana. I knew it! Gar. Where did you say? Gary, Indiana. In fact, Gary Conservatory was my alma mater. Was she now? Why, yes. Gold medal, class of art five. How to do, Miss Peru? How to do, Mr. Hill? Of course, Peru. I thought the name sounded familiar. I've tried to see you since the other night. He wants to put Winthrop in the band. We're not interested, Mama. But Marion, the boy might have his father's musical gifts. He does have my jaw, you know. Oh, your husband musical? Well, I'd very much like to have a talk with him. I'm sure Do we- you burst in everyone's home like this, prying into personal affairs? We're not interested. Marion! Well, that's one for and one against. Why not let the boy's father decide? The boy's father is dead. Anything else? Oh, I'm sorry, but that's all the more reason why your brother should have My shabs. brother is a ten-year-old problem child who can't, understand, who can't understand why his father was taken away. Would you care to explain it to him? He's been brooding about it for two years. As to your musical tricks, why don't you go into business with some nice carnival man who sells gold painted watch and a glass diamond ring? Musical tricks? Well, Miss Peru, I hardly... <laughs> I get the feeling she likes the idea. Oh, a little cautious, perhaps, but I admire that in a woman. You just keep me alive, and I'll be back later in the week. Oh, Professor, about the boy's measurements when he make all his clothes. Uh, waist 21, sleeve 14, crouch 18. Fine, fine, that's all I need. Now, I really must get back to the hotel. I hope you'll excuse Marion, Professor. She's not No really... apologies, please. I'm sure that at heart, she's as wonderful as yourself. Good day to you, Widow Peru. Gone? He has, and I hope not forever. Darling, don't you ever think of your future? 
future. Gary Conservatory Gold Medal Class of Art 5. Now, darling. Now, Mama, surely a girl's future doesn't depend on encouraging every fast talking, self centered woman chasing traveling man who comes to town. And the fact that he claims his commodity is music does not, in this particular case, impress me. All right, darling, all right. But it's a well-known principle that if you keep the flint in one jar and the steel in another, you'll never strike much of a fire. Mama! Oh, Winthrop. Winthrop, I know you're there. Please go to the library and ask Miss Grubb to give you the book I set aside. It's the Indiana State Educational Journal, 1890-1910. It's a large blue and gray volume. Do I have to? You won't have to talk to anyone. I've written it all down. Thank you, dear. What are you up to? What do you need with books at the start of the night? I have a feeling the Indiana Journal may help me poke some large holes in the professor's claims. I give up. At your age, if you don't mind my asking, what kind of white knight do you think is going to come riding along? Well, I'm not waiting for a Luther Griner who backs me into the ancient history shelf every time he comes into the library. Does he now? Or Ed Gamage in that buggy of his with the removable back seat. But I'm not waiting for a man in shining white armor either. My white knight. Zanita, hey Zanita! Tommy! Mama and Papa are sitting right there in the bank! Ye gods! All right, then meet me after supper. I can't. It's Epworth League night! Meet you where? The footbridge. 
You see, isn't that just what I said? Last in the lumberyard and on the footbridge, and where will you meet me after that? In the black hole of Calcutta? Ye gods! I just wanted to show you my invention. What invention? The music holder for the marching piccolo player. It still has a couple minor flaws. You see, when you keep it tight enough to hold the music steady, you lose circulation and can't wiggle your fingers. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, you could go blind. Tony, it's Papa! Is that the first thing I said or not? Yes, George. Yes, the very first thing, or I'll eat hay with the horse. Get that spellbinder's credentials, I said. Morning of July 4th, 19 and 12. And now look, my wife is off dancing at any and all hours instead of in the home. But George! The school board is singing up street and down alley instead of tending to city matters. My oldest girl is out boodling around with some wild kid, and my business has fallen so far off, I can't find the balance sheet. I found something very interesting in this book about Professor Hill's alma mater. His who? His university. Yeah, I already know all about that. In fact, it's the only thing I can ever get out of him. Gary Conservatory, class of Art 5. If you'll just take time to read a little bit about the conservatory, I don't think you'll have to look further. It's on Cade Hoffa. The Wells Fargo wagon is coming up from the depot. The Wells Fargo wagon? A likely story, at this hour in the day. Nonsense. The Wells Fargo wagon. It could be the band instruments. The band instruments. Oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is a coming down the street. Oh, please let it be for me. Oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is a coming down the street. I wish, I wish I knew what it could be. I got a box of maple sugar on my birthday. Oh, that tub. Oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is up and coming down the street. A free plate surprise for COD. Could do curtains or dishes. Or it could be. Yes, it could be. Yes, you're right. It surely could be. Something special. Something very, very special now. Stay off the streets, get acquainted with your instruments, and think the minuet in G. La di da di da di da di da. La di da, la di da. Sister, sister, isn't it the most scrumptious salvo thing you ever saw? I never thought I'd ever see anything so scrumptious as this scrumptious salvo thing. Oh, sister. Round one for you. Mr. Hill, but I better hear some by God tooting out of them horns in pretty short order, or I'll see you in front of a grand jury over at the county seat. Now, Miss Marion, about that book. Come, George, tempest. You watch your phraseology, woman. I, I, I gotta get something from the librarian to get along if you need to. About that book. The ladies' dance committee meets Tuesday nights at the high school.
lovely. Now turn. Take the body with you. Lovely, ladies, lovely. All right, let's have a go at our Grecian urn. Grecian urn. Two Grecian urns. And a fountain. Trickle, 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 trickle. Oh, splendid, ladies, splendid. I predict that our Del Sart display will be the highlight of the ice cream sociable. Now, gentlemen, if you're ready, and ladies, don't make me tell you again. Always keep your face to the audience. All right, Mr. Dunlop. <laughs> Sweet hello, dear, that sets me up. And it's your God to go, dear, that gets me down. It's you on my pillow in all of my dreams. Till
My daughter! Papa! There, Shin, Your Honor. Your daughter and I are going steady behind your back. Why, you would rather do it in front of your back. Do but... what? Never mind. Zanita scared you, but I'm not. I think you'd hate to have your own daughter scared of you, Chilly Clyde. I'm going to warn you once more. If I ever catch you touching my daughter again, I'll by God horsewhip you till hell won't happen again. Now, George. Not one poop out of you, madam. I think he means peep. Yes. And now you get out of this public building. I've got as much right as anyone in a public building. Right, right. How do you get any right around here? Aiding and abetting the swindling activities of this spellbinding symbol salesman. You know what I see written all over you? Reform school. Now get out. Get out, you wild kid! Papa, please! It's calculus like you make blood in the water! Be gone! You watch your phraseology, young lady. Go home! <laughs> you Lele! Yes, George! You I... tend to your dance! My dance? I'll handle the need at taking up with wild kids from the wrong side of town. Mr. Mayor, if I could just make you understand. Well, you can't. And by the way, thanks for nothing. I read that book you gave me from cover to cover and didn't find a thing. Mr. Mayor, if you please. I'll settle your hash as soon as I get my premises off of these daughter. <laughs> yes. All right, but in the meantime, I want you to know I'm vouching for Tommy Gillis. That boy's got the confidence of every kid in this town. You'll be waiting to shake his hand by the time our band plays its first concert. <laughs> by the time your band plays its first concert, the individual members will have to foregather in wheelchairs on account of the broken legs they'll get from tripping over their beards. And I'll tell you something, my fine young feathered. My feathered young. Never mind. Oliver, JC, you are Ollie. I want this man's papers and I want them tonight. Don't let him out of your sight. He's slippier than a Mississippi skirt. You mean you want us to get his credentials? Get his papers or get him in jail? Couldn't make myself any plainer if I see a button hook in the well water. And now you, young lady, are coming home with me. <gasps> Papa, I am 16 You are years five old. as far as I'm concerned. You are embarrassing. I don't I'm care if I'm home. embarrassing. Professor Hill, I think Mayor Shin has behaved abominably. And I think it was wonderful of you coming to Tommy's defense. Oh, that was nothing. Yes, it was. No, no, no. A man can't dodge an issue every time a little personal risk is involved. What does the poet say? A coward dies a thousand deaths. A brave man, only five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the mayor was already pretty mad on account of his billiard parlor, but, oh, I suppose a musical recommendation from a musical authority like yourself would help, but... I couldn't think of asking you to do such a thing. Why, Professor Hill? You would. I'd be glad to. I just wish I was a little more informed. I've been wanting to talk to you about Winthrop's cornet. His cornet? Mother of pearl keys. I'm sure it's fine. But you see, he never touches it. Oh, the first week or so, he made a few, uh, experimental blasts, I guess you'd say. Yes, yes, blasts. And he sings the minuet in G-D-Da almost constantly. La-di-da, la-di-da. He never touches the cornet. Well, you see, He says you told him it wasn't necessary. Well, He I... tells me about some think system. If he thinks the minuet in G, he won't have to bother with the notes. Now, Professor. Miss Marion, the think system is a revolutionary method, I'll admit. So was Galileo's conception of the heavens. Columbus's conception of the egg, a <gasps> globe. Bach's conception of the well-tempered clavichord. Now, I cannot discuss these things here in public, but if you'll allow me to call, when may I call? Why, any night this week. Take a little talk, a little, take a little talk, a little chat. What's the hell with it? It's so rude, you have to do a night outside, Mitty. You were so dear dancing with the shabooji with Professor Hill. It was wonderful. You danced like a fairy princess with the blue sheets on the floor. You had a golden shimmy in your hair and silver sheets in your eyes. We know that you will soon unfold the pretty part of your adult fear. Oh, we got a Fairy princess, you'll be poor. Golden shimmer, silver shoes. Now what gold, heart of gold. Here, where woman's heart should be. The professor told us to 
Congratulations, all of you, truly wonderful congratulations. Now, let's see. You know all week I've tried to give you fellows my references and credentials, but every time I try, you manage to get off the subject somehow. Now, I just want you on top in my hotel. Take me a second. Sorry, afraid I'll have to go with you. <laughs> yes. Well, let's see if I have my key. Well, what's this? Oh. A testimonial from Madame Rini, only female bassoon player to ever appear on the Red Path Circuit. Her stage name, of course. Actually, she was from Moline. Lido Rose Quackenbush. Oh, could I see that for a minute? Oh, you'll never forget the name, Lido Rose. Same as the old song. Light a rose, I'm home again, rose. To get the sun back in the sky. Light a rose, I'm home again, rose. About a thousand kisses shy. Ding dong, ding. I can hear. Chapel bell chime, ding dong ding. At the least suggestion, I'll pop the question. Light a rose, I'm home again, rose, without a sweet heart to my name.
to tell him, ah, yes, ah, no, ah, fiddlesticks. Just open your mouth and let it come out. Now, Mama, now nothing. If he comes to call again and you get him alone and you haven't got the gumption to tell him how you feel. Tell him? Well, there's nothing wrong with a lady like Hint. Mama! Winthrop, where have you been? Fitting. Fishing. With Harold. You mean Professor Hill? Mm-hmm. And look, there's still some worms left. Did you have a good time? Scrumptious. He told me all about his hometown, Gary, Indiana, and he said he'd take me over there someday. He even taught me a song there, Holy Is Any Yes Is It. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, let me say it once again. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, that's the town that knew me when. If you'd like to have a logical explanation of how it happened on this elegant thing in case we all I will say without a moment of hesitation. here somewhere. Oh, the Shin home is on East Elm. This is West Elm. Oh, criminy. <laughs> so you're the piano teacher here in town? You must know about this fella Hill forming a boys band around here. Yes. Well, you don't have to let him bother you no more. I got the goods on him in spades, swindling two-bit thimble rigger. That's why I gotta go see Shin. I'm only passing through. How many? It's only making a 15-minute water stop. Wish it was 20, though. She'll have to concentrate five minutes on you, girly girl. Who are you? Name's Charlie Cowell, Anvil Salesman. <laughs> but just now I'm out to protect the good name of the traveling fraternity from this swindler. But Mr. Cowell, you're making a big mistake. Mistake? Mistake my grandmother's corset cover. That man's been the raspberry seed of my wisdom teeth for just long enough. He's poor little North from his knock in a small Iowa, too. Say, what kind of music teacher are you who couldn't see right through him? He's no more professor. I know all about that. Band leaders are always called professor. It's a harmless deception. He's a fine director in his scholastic. Now wait a minute. Fine director? Have you heard one note of music from any band? No, but. But nothing, girly girl. He never formed a band in his life. And he never will. If you'll just listen to me for a minute. No, sir. I gotta leave word, and I can see you're not the one to leave it with. Well, the train is going after the depot. You never catch it at the crossing. I gotta catch that train. And I gotta leave word about this fella Hill, too. Who am I gonna leave it with? Not on your tin type! Try me! <laughs> Train now, run for it! Why, you double dealing little! Who do you think you're protecting? That man's got a girl in every county in Illinois, and he's taking her away from every single one of them. And that's 102 counties! Not to mention the piano teachers like you, he cozies up to to keep their mouths shut. Now the one of you are the last of me, girly girl! Like a rose, I'm home again, Rose, without a sweetheart. 
Top of the evening, Miss Peru. Miss Marion. You and Marion come up and set. I've, I've put some jelly on the stove. There's no jelly on the stove, Mama. Then I'll put some on. <laughs> Shall we set, as your mother said? Well, I... You did ask me to call. Did I? I didn't mean now, anything. Now, Miss Marion, I'm not suggesting that your invitation inferred anything but academic enlightenment. The Think System? I've been by to try to explain it to you a time or two this week, but there always seem to be people around. Mostly ladies, I thought. Yes, uh, Mrs. Squires and several of the ladies. Well, I'm glad. Wouldn't want anybody beating my time. You wouldn't? No, ma'am. Well, it's evidently not the convenient night. See you at the sociable later. Uh, Professor Hill, is it true that you've had a hundred? What I'm trying to say is... Yes? Is it true that you've developed a, a think system? A what? A think? Oh, think system, yes. Well, it's really quite simple, as simple as whistling. Nobody has to show you how to use your lips in whistling. You just think the tune and have it come out clearly here. Now try this yourself before you ask any questions. I take your word. Could we sit down? Are all music teachers as dense as I am? All music teachers? I dare say you meet dozens. Even a hundred. Well, I... And have they all been fascinated as I have with the think system? Some more, some less. One young lady even thought up of the same system before I even got to her town. She showed me a few refinements. I see. Have I said something wrong? Oh, please, Professor Hill, don't let me keep you. You must have many more important things to do than to explain the think system to me. Can't think of one. I must be very dull company for a man of your experience. Now say, where'd you get an idea like that? One hears rumors of traveling salesmen. Now, Miss Marion, you mustn't believe everything you hear. One even hears rumors about librarians. I suppose you're referring to Uncle Maddie. Uncle Maddie? Mr. Madison, my father's best friend. No matter what they say, he left me the sure job so Mother and Winthrop and I would have some security. Surely you don't believe! Of course not, but that's exactly what I'm saying. Why do you think people start these rumors? Narrow-mindedness. Jealousy? Jealousy mostly, I guess. Exactly, and jealousy mostly starts rumors about traveling salesmen. What have you heard? Oh, oh, nothing about you personally, just generally. What have you heard generally? Just that. But of course it stands to reason that that disappointment and jealousy can lead to, I mean, take you for instance, your attentions to, to customers and, well, teachers might easily be misinterpreted, mightn't they? I mean, now honestly, mightn't they? Why? And so you say, if another salesman or somebody were jealous, I mean, well, they could be downright lies, couldn't they? What could? Rumors and things. Why, of course. It just proves you should never believe everything you hear, doesn't it? I mean, if you discuss Miss things- Miss Marion, I'd be delighted to discuss anything in the world with you. But can't we do it sitting down? You sit, your knees bend and all. We could sit on the porch steps. Or we could go sit on a large hollow log over at the footbridge. I couldn't think of it. I've never been to the footbridge with a man in my life. Just to talk. I have to change for the sociable. Then meet me there in 15 minutes. Oh, please, I can't some other time. Maybe tomorrow? My dear little librarian, pile up enough tomorrows, and you'll find you've collected nothing but empty <laughs> yesterdays. I don't know about you, but I want to make today worth remembering. Oh. So had I. The footbridge. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes.
screaming for music if those kids show up at the sociable. Yeah. Here's most of the dough. I got Tommy collected. He's trying to keep the kids together, at least. Pretending to hold a practice over at the lumber yard. All right, Mars. Get the rig. I got it. What time's the freight going? 9.40 from the junction. Why, it's barely 8.30 yet. Look, you want to turtle whirl around here and get yourself caught in a bunny trap? Be my guest, but I'm Don't a- worry, Mars. I'll meet you at the hotel in plenty of time. Miss Marion, you're late. But you said 15 minutes. No, I meant to say you were well. About 26 years late. Took you all this time to get to the footbridge with the fella. If you want to know the truth, it was almost longer. Oh? Halfway here, I nearly turned back. I suppose I'm not the first to find it easier to think clearly when not under the spell of your salesmanship. Now, Miss Marion, surely you don't think I've been trying to sell you anything. Oh, no. You've given me something. And that's why I've come. I don't recall giving Oh, yes, you have. There's something beautiful. That's why I came. And I'm glad. Oh, please don't be afraid that I expect too much more. One can't expect a traveling salesman to stay put. I know there have been many ports of call, and there will be many more. But that's no reason not to be grateful for what you will have left behind for me.
expecting a cable from Hector Berlioz. This could be it. Now what? Who oh, is the salesman here? It looks like she's selling and you're buying it. Are you kidding? I didn't know I was going to be able to leave tonight. I had to keep her off balance, didn't I? Yeah, well, she's so off balance now, you couldn't tell her from a cat boat in a hurricane. Listen, Buster Brown, I've come up the ranks on this skirmish, and I'm not resigning without my commission. Greg, you're not going to make it anywhere out here on the footbridge. There's a place over at Madison Park, near the social, makes this place look like an old lady's home. Now beat it. Go get the ring. Never a peaceful moment in the music business. Now then, where were we? You were about to tell me what I don't know about you. Yes, well, we don't have to get into that just now, do we? No, we don't, Harold. Or ever, for that matter. The librarian hasn't felt much like doing research lately. But she did plenty when you first came here. Oh? About what? About Professor Harold Hill, Gary Conservatory of Music. Gold medal class of Art Five. Harold, there wasn't any Gary Conservatory in Art Five. Why, there certainly. Because the town wasn't even built till Art Six. See you at the sociable. You knew? All this time? Since July 7th. Three days after you came. I tore this page out of the Indiana Journal. It was originally intended to use against you. But now I give it to you with all my heart. But if you knew why didn't... <laughs> why, you little... <laughs> While a hundred and ten cornets played the air, then I modestly took my place as the one and only bass, and I oompahed up and down the square. With a hundred and ten cornets right behind. My star is shining its brightest light. There were horns of every shape and Sweet dreams be yours, dear. If dreams there be While a hundred and ten cornets play the air I wish I may And I wish I might Now good night My someone Good night Crazy, he's going all over town, spilling everything. I'll say I'm crazy. Missed my train, probably lost my job. But I got you now, Hill, and you'll pay. Would have been to the clink right now, hadn't it been for that piano teacher. Tell her all about you, and what does she do? Lily carries me around till I can't get to shit. Little dried up man, hungry doxy, round here, this. Get out of here, I'll kill you, you dirty mouth salesman. You don't know nothing. Bully! You big blow up! I'll stay in this town till you get yours up, down, through, and sideways! Why? You never even knew the territory! Here's your stuff, Craig. The race in the alley. Come on, hurry up! Listen to this man! You gullible, grass-fed goats! Can't you get it through your head that you're being swindled out of your eye teeth right now? This minute? There's a burglar in the bedroom while you're fiddling in the parlor! I'm talking about Harold Hill! Road agent! Highwayman! Pick! Pocket! 
Her pocket? Same day! Tat's in your wallet, sir. And yours, madam. And yours too, little lady. From the moment he entered this town, there's more documented evidence than you'll ever have time to read. There is no ban. There has never been a ban, and there will be no ban. And if you don't hunt this man down like a mad dog, there will be no Herald Hill either. He'll be on the next train out of town. Now, will you believe me? Well, what are we waiting for? I want my money back. Money back? I want his hide. Yes. yes! After him. And when you find him, bring him back to the schoolhouse. After him! Come on. Oh. Oh. You might as well quit wiggling. Now, there are two things you're entitled to know. One, you're a wonderful kid. I thought that from the first. That's why I wanted you in the band, so you'd quit moping around and feeling sorry for yourself. What band? I always think there's a band, kid. What's the other thing I'm entitled to know? Well, that's none of your business now that I think about it. I wish you'd never come to River City. No, you don't, Winthrop. You Sith, or you believe him? I believe everything he ever said. Where, what he promised us. I know what he promised us. And it all happens just like he said. The lights, and the flags, and the colors, and the symbols. Where was all that? In the way every kid in this town walked around here all summer and looked and acted. Especially you. And the parents, too. Does Mama wish he'd never come to River City? Well, you do, don't you? No, Winthrop. Now please go, please, Harold. Go on, Professor. Hurry up! I can't go, Winthrop. Why not? For the first time in my life, I got my foot caught in the door. There was a the programs about this time. But rest assured, this snake in our bosom would have been misapprehended by this time. Yes. 
And rest assured, my fellow River citizens, always remember that I did everything in my power to prevent this dire happening from, uh, happening. Four score! Hey, don't get our money back! That professor collected nearly $300 on uniforms just tonight! And we haven't even seen them uniforms yet! He's slippery, I told I you! I haven't seen any uniforms or my boy, just as after supper! He's a kidnapper! Fine situation here. Four score and. S <gasps> wait, wait just a minute! Virtue has triumphed! The sword of retribution has cut down Professor Harold Hill! <laughs> and if there are those, as I have heard, who are melting tar and collecting feathers, I will not say them nay! Well, I should think there ought to be some of you who could forget our everlasting Iowa stubborn chip on the shoulder long enough to remember River City before Harold Hill arrived! Do you remember? Well, do you? Surely some of you ought to be grateful to him for what he's brought to River City. And if so, I should think you want to admit it. <laughs> You're wasting a great deal of time here. If there is any person in this hall who thinks that this man Hill does not deserve to be tarred and feathered, then let him raise his hand. Go ahead. No one. Oh, that's what, that's what I did. <gasps> Lately. Lee. And the rest of you standing there like a coat of Shropshire sheep! Have you people forgotten that you bought expensive uniforms, technical instruction books, and high-priced band instruments? Have you forgotten the clear understanding and warranty that your children will be taught to play in a band? Well, where's the band? Where's the band? Think, children. <laughs> Think. 